All right, so I incorporated a Richard Wilson exercise, one of his famous exercises called the apex of the apotheosis. The dreadful. Is what I'm, <coughs> which is what I'm, pardon me, which is what I'm considering naming my band. I've got all these different options. It's just like become kind of an inside joke. It would be lame for a metal band, so there's that, yeah. Apex of the apotheosis. Maybe I shouldn't say it, someone's going to steal it. So Kevin Crabb in the Apex of the Apotheosis Tree. Um, and it was really <laughs> brilliantly conceived of an uh, uh, exercise. It's a concept that uh, involves <coughs> modulating from duple <clears throat> into eighth note triplets. The eighth note triplets then become the new duple. <coughs> from that new duple, we then play eighth note triplets, it speeds up. That new group of eighth note triplets becomes the new duple and so on and so forth. And then it retrogrades back. <coughs> so go ahead and put it on at 40. Now at 40, so slow, so how would we play that? Now, it's a good idea to have the strokes up in front of you, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, is a good idea. That. And I had something else up. There it is. Okay. So we're looking at the flam part. Now, as we know, <clears throat> this technique uses motions to uh, play strokes. So now we're at that you're and, and it could be the angle of the camera it might be comfortable for you so but let's just let's just consider it it looks to me as though let's see is that, is that the way it looks for me too see i'm i'm trying to get to a place where i can allow my forearm to be parallel with the floor and then as well playing with the playing surface half an inch e to butt end just above that plane surface. So you see how, okay. See, that maybe your pad is a little low, is what I'm saying. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe not. That's what I normally have. The one hand is just doing this, isn't it? Yeah. Go ahead and do that. Mm 
Now, now, <clears throat> look look at my uh, look at my upper upper arm. So I'm going ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. There's no at this speed. There's not even enough stroke. I don't think. So, so see, see this? Look at look. I, why does your arm come out like this? I get I see this. But but if you're really leading with your wrist, wouldn't it just do that? You, you're not going to see all that movement in the. It's tiny. It's the wrist, and then the wrist does that. In other words, you're turning towards the ceiling, and as you turn towards the ceiling, the forearm comes down. When you ne next time you're out for a walk, notice how your how your body works. You know you're going to pronate forward. Something happens. I'm not sure what happens. Is the whole leg swivels, moves forward. Here that's not occurring. But but you see the you roll up onto the ball of your foot, right? And and then. As you step forward, the heel comes down. The leg follows. The heel comes down and you roll and it happens again and again and again. And you'll notice that you don't have to push your leg down. You don't even think about it. You see? See, see how much your elbow just came out just there when you were no, no, no. The elbow doesn't come out that much. This comes out like this. There you go, or like that. And then it's just a wrist chart. See, then you've got to get this part of it. There you go. OK, put, this, put the hands together. OK, so from there, and two and one and so now we're going to go one and uh, two and uh, now we're going to play triplets. So and uh, one and uh, two and uh, go ahead and put that for me out loud. One and uh, two and uh, one and uh, two and uh, one and uh, two and uh, get the metronome. Playing metronome together. One and a uh, two and a. Uh. One and the two and the one and the two. And Say it. Don't fall behind. The one and the two and. The. Let, let me let me see. One and two. And one and a uh, two and a uh, one and a uh, two and a uh, one and a uh, two and a uh, okay. one and a uh, two and a uh, one and a uh, two and a uh, one and wait, 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 wait. Now you, the, the one is going to land and the two is going to the numbers are going to land with the metronome. So don't fall behind. Try again. And the uh, two. And uh, two and all it is one and uh, two and uh, internalize that timing. <clears throat> and, uh, one and uh, two and 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 uh, one and uh, two. <laughs> Now we're going we're gonna to stop counting, and we're, we're going to now count the new speed as duple. One and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and. Okay, so first count it as triplets. The two and the one and the two 
show fresh. However, now it looks to me like there, there's an upstroke. One and a two and a one and on the last. Yeah. Up and a two and a up. Count duple. One and two and one and two. Okay. <coughs> now, pardon me. Now go into triplets. And a two and a three and a four and a. School. Part of the struggle is the intellectual part of it. Oh, right? it's, it's, but, it's but, <laughs> but this shouldn't be hard, right? One and uh, look, uh, 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 look. It's not this thing that we're really struggling to get out. It's nothing. It's just doing this over and over. Watch. Over and over. I'm in this range somewhere. You're, you're, you're really providing a lot, and we, we can play it. We can play it. Yeah. But for now, for now, yeah, just relax. It, there's no need to slam it down. You don't have to come up that high. really how the, uh, as I, I should point out, I borrowed what is Richard Wilson's concept of apex of the apotheosis. I believe he wrote, he wrote the concept for feet. You have the hi-hat, I'll show you, you need to take a foot lesson, but he'd have, he'd have one sound source, one foot playing one thing, then the other foot playing the other thing, and he'd, he'd climb the mountain that way. So now I've applied this concept to the flam tap. So it's a little different, right? But now all you're going to do is is reverse it. So if we're if we're at this speed, one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two, one two three four one two three four one and a two and a three and a four and a one. Try that. No, play the other speed. No, no, no. I want you to. Part of the gig is is the counting. The counting. I know. I know. You're right. I'm just. Always, whenever Dick Wilson would call 
doubles and row strokes. You said and counting. You had to count out loud. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, that. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. Two, one. <laughs> On rest. Okay. Okay. So you understand the idea. Now, <laughs> hard. Very hard. <laughs> cool, man. Now, the idea is is to not only understand the conception, but how are you playing the stroke, right? And and so because and and I think this was Richard Wilson's thinking, and this is why he was different than Murray Spivak. Murray liked the idea of of keeping these very simple, so you could just concentrate on how you're playing the stroke. Richard Wilson thought that it would be a good idea to distract your mind and make it even more difficult to play the stroke because you're busy trying to figure out how the heck do I play this thing conceptually. But but what we don't want to end up is we don't want to end up playing out here, which is kind of what you did. Wasn't too bad though. You maintain motions. There was some rebound going on, right? At, at, when it came time to when it slowed down and it came time to no longer play rebounds but to turn your wrist for it you did okay which is that's kind of why it's neat to right. modulate a particular stroke up and down like this but we don't want to end up playing out here we all we're always right here it should never go away this this shouldn't go away sorry what does Richard Martinez call it? It's like a, this is some kind of platform, right? Notice this is our platform. We 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 build this the structure on top of this foundation here, not out here, not up here, not here. Get yeah, here. It's the floor. It's a really big deal. Okay, that was cool. Okay, so you you can get you can get that out. <clears throat> Why don't you take a look at that again? Have fun with that, considering what we just talked about. The throws, the throws are led by the wrist, not something like this. Mm -hmm. It kind of looks right, huh? But it's not. It's just, this is an arm thing, and I want this. Okay. You have the flamacue. That's the next stroke. I want to keep, keep you moving through strokes. Yep. <laughs> okay. So once again, we're going to consider how would we play this stroke, the flanacue, using this technique. We also we need to play it in time. I know that we don't have the metronome on. That doesn't mean we don't play it in time, right? So we have one ah uh, and uh, two ah uh, and uh, one ah uh, and uh, two ah uh, one ah uh, and uh, two ah uh, and. Uh. So again, we have an upstroke. Would be the appoggiatura, the left, right? And an upstroke on the left. And 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 so on. Uh, so I'm playing the first flam with a right wrist turn, not a throw, which is still a wrist turn. <laughs> uh, okay, so and then so the left, the appoggiatura is the up. So we get this. Uh, and then 
we're going to throw make a small throw into the last flam, which is a right. Say, it does feel like a small flick, right? I did it unconsciously. I didn't even think about it, but yeah. like uh, uh, see, there's like a flick here on the last flam because it makes it's weird if it's all just wrist, I guess. It, and, but what I, I think it is important is to me not, we have to be careful with what words we use because they will <clears throat> affect how we think, right? And, and so for me, decide that one throw is a flick and the other throw is a throw, however, for me, there is a big throw because it's an accent. And then a small throw. No, but that's what I'm saying. I did exactly what you were saying, which is the, flam, the, the first flam, for some reason, it didn't, doesn't feel like you should do a throw on your right hand, but the last one, it does feel that it does make sense to do it. <laughs> and I did it unconsciously, and it did exactly the same. <laughs> okay, but here's, here's what I noticed. And you're, you're right. You see, these things are kind of instinctual. They become pretty obvious as we go along, right? And that's what's happening here. You didn't even to think about it. Cool. Here's what just happened. You went and you got this volume of an accent in your left. And then you got virtually almost the same volume in the right, but you didn't come up as high. Now that's interesting. Check it out. Uh, see if I can do it. Let's see. This hand's coming up to here, and this hand's only coming up to here. Listen, they're almost just the same volume. But but here's what here's what this technique is about. We get volume from heights of turn or heights of throw. So if I'm going to throw this high or at accent, it's the right hand is slamming. Then then the then the right hand doesn't need to add excessive force to try to match that. You see, we don't do that. If we want this volume in the right, then we come up the same height. But what I want in the right, Brad, what I want in the right is this. Yeah. So we're going to get this and this and this. So you get ah, 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 ah. The last plan isn't an action. See, that's why I said, so that's why I said be careful with that word flick, because now you're flicking and adding all kinds of force. Give me a small throw in the right. No, no, just, just give me a little throw in the right. It's too small. I don't know. I'm coming up a little more than that. Check it out. What I'm, doing. I'm coming up to here for the first time. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I'm doing this. OK. You try. Make that throw in the right. Here you go. It's not, it's not excessively loud. OK. Yeah, now you can play the stroke and it'll, it'll probably sound right. There you go. That's it. So let's find the tempo. Huh? Da, da, click. 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 Da, da, click. What time? Click. Da, da, da. So put the metronome on at 46. <clears throat> oh, no, 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 that's not how it is. Notice, notice again, I don't think I get around to mentioning it, I'm illustrating it, but you're doing it again instinctively. Where is the up for the right that leads to the throw on the right, the one we just worked on, the smaller throw? You were doing it. Were you thinking of it? I don't know. See, there it is. Up, down. Both hands are making an up to a down. There it is. Go, now, now, okay. 
Now go the other way. Uh, <laughs> now I thought we were going to make the as as in the other direction. We made that first right flam just a wrist turn. So make the left just a wrist turn. And the right will be playing an upstroke. Own it. Yeah, lead to the downstroke. And then a small left throw. Up, throw. There it is. Don't make a throw on the first one. I mean, you could, but we've decided not to. Don't make the throw. Ah, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Okay. Uh, ah, okay, okay, I see what I mean, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. No, 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 what do you do? Show me what a left flam looks like if you don't throw for the left. Wanna just be this? This is all, this is all that's happening. Right? Right? This is this, right? Right? It's sorry, let's see. Uh ah 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 But right now, let's not make it a throw. Mm -hmm. Duplicate we did on the other side. So throw in the right, at them in the left at the end. There you go. Okay. Good. Let's move the let's move the metronome. Not a lot of rebound going on there, was there? Not really, no. Right. You wouldn't put the metronome on at 60. This one I feel the rebound on the double, right? So this one, yeah. This, that, that. Right, that's where I feel the rebound. happening yeah yeah but now what we have happening is something exactly well watch 
getting is Richard Wilson made a, would make a really big deal out of squeeze and release. S Q, he'd write R E on every exercise. Now what that can lead to is excessive squeezing and releasing. That's what you told me. Which which isn't what we want. Right? So when we make a downstroke there's there's a feeling of, of closure. And then, and then when we go to play the double, there's a feeling of, of release. Squeeze, release. I know you said not to make a big deal out of it, but really? can, can, can we just discuss it? Because I think it's important is is that squeeze and release mostly to do with the the fingers releasing itself, or can you just elaborate a bit more? What does it mean? I know you don't want to make a big deal out of it, but we we kind of have to discuss it at some point. Well, discussing it discussing it doesn't mean it turn, should necessarily turn into a big deal, <coughs> but I have to add that precautionary note. Um, So what, what happens is the hand naturally wants to close and we stop the bead low. So the hand, the hand does. Go ahead, just join me. Stick in your hand, right? See, it's open and then we flick or throw. Sorry, I'm using that word again. Yeah, you see, the hand's open to close. Now there's no stick, so it's going to be exaggerated because we're not holding a, a, a lever arm. So we're going to get a release and a squeeze. See how little the arm really does move here? I'm not coming way up. I'm just here. We get that to that. Now when we go to play a double, a double on the rebound is, is about turning getting to the surface and feeling how they and opens up to allow for access to the fulcrum. Okay. Yeah, see, now we have access to the fulcrum. Here, with a closed hand, it doesn't feel like we have access to that fulcrum. We have access to the fulcrum we touch, Allow the hand to open up, recognizing that it's a three finger grip and that the fulcrum is in the middle finger. And then we have access to that fulcrum. So by virtue of what a rebound is, relative to what a throw is, in other words, the throw being the closure of the hand, the stopping of the bead low, and by virtue of now needing to play a rebound, of course the hand would open up. Right now, if we were just going to play rebounds over and over, that would be different. Well, that, I'm not going to get into all of that right now, but you see, now we're just playing rebounds. As soon as I go to make a throw, now my hand is closed and I have to go back to being more open. Okay, go ahead and try it. It's about feeling it. Because these are just words. These are things that you feel. Again, how you've been picking up on things innately, right? Because they're so obvious. How are you going to play a double? You don't, and you don't have to lift up for a double because you're not going to. You're not. The doubles aren't the up. It's another note, isn't there? Nope. Nope. So you're getting. That's why this stroke is cool. It, it, it has an obvious squeeze and release, right? So 
So we're getting ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh. And then, there, then there's a little turn. So it's ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, turn, uh, or up. That's the up. Search speed. Double, mm -hmm. double. Then you make a tap. Now a tap. Nope, you forgot the tap. Go ahead and put the right hand on your leg and put the left, keep the left on the surface and figure out the stroke. Right hand on your leg, on your thigh. Mm -mm. My, my bad, put it on your calf so your arm is, is relaxed. Yeah, play on your calf. Play the stroke. Okay. Um. One ah uh, and uh, two ah uh, and uh, one ah uh, and uh, two. Boy, counting is helpful, man. Count up loud. One, two, one. No, you got to count the eight, the sixteenth notes. One ah uh, and uh, two ah uh, and. Uh. Always count the smallest division. One eight and uh, two. One eight and uh, two. Now. Rick, Raph, Raph, I, I told you that the the Richard Wilson school of counting was one a uh, and uh, not one e and because he wanted the uh, e, the uh, the ahs to sound the same and e and ah uh, don't sound the same. So for him, it, it more sense to to count one a uh, and uh, but but aside from that. You want to keep counting right to the end of the bar. If the bar is one ah uh, and a uh, two ah uh, and uh, one ah uh, and keep counting, keep the flow going. It's hard to count like that. Why? What if I what happened if I asked you to sing a tune while you were playing? Yeah, that's a, one uh, and uh, two and uh, one ah uh, and a uh, two ah uh, and uh, and uh, one and Okay, you got the idea. You should you should practice that, and I'll make a note to have you count out loud. But you see, oh. go ahead. It's this whole squeeze and release, and I know you don't want to put a lot of emphasis to it, but a couple of questions, which is the um the pressure on the stick remains the same correct regardless not quite sure what you mean by that so the, the, the grip the pressure on like the two fingers remains the same right the pinch here relative to what so reg regardless if i'm doing a throw or if i'm doing this the pressure that i apply here it still remains the same across, right? Well, the first finger and thumb, let's use Richard Wilson's words, are firm, comfortable, and constant. Constant, exactly. Yeah. Right? So, the, the, and that's your guide in this three finger group. Regardless. Now, if, if the hand is opening and closing from the wrist ever so slightly, won't there be a change of pressure? We're always trying to be as relaxed as possible. We don't want to. We don't want to apply any unnecessary force or pressure. But clearly, for instance, this is going to feel a little different than this. You're adding more force. So I feel I land, I feel more pressure. I feel pressure. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, I, I, I feel the recoil from the force of the surface in the hand. Go ahead and make a big throw and feel what that feels like. Okay, now make a small throw. See, feels different, doesn't it? Of course it does. Yeah. Well, there's less pressure, right? I guess. But, but we're but we're not adding pressure or minimizing pressure. We're leaving everything the same, and it and the system takes care of itself, doesn't it? I'm not saying I need to be tighter. I need to be more this or more that. Uh, I take, I leave this grip alone. I make a motion from the wrist. 
and everything works out. If I'm going to turn this high, the hand will have a certain reaction. If I'm only going to turn this high, I've left everything alone. Right. Right, but basically, it, it, it's reaction, right? It's not that you actually need to squeeze with the fingers, right? Right. It's self. The, the, the system is self-regulatory. So I'm asking you really to notice, not to do anything. Yes, there are going to be feelings of, of more force or less force, depending on all kinds of different things. Okay. So what we're looking to do is at, at a certain speed, and that's why you should probably leave the metronome on. But if because if it's too slow, it's going to just be two wrist turns. It's fast enough for a rebound. Okay, so let's put the metronome. Let's put the metronome on again at 60. And see if you can feel that. Just do this, just do this. So this is this is something that this is why I got messed up with the whole squeeze and release thing. I exaggerated squeeze and release, right? And so let's just so so it might take a little time for you to really start to understand this because until you really have an understanding as to how the hand works for rebounds, it might be difficult to, to feel. A squeeze and release. We'll see, but but here is a uh, 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 how would you say um, this is a remedial exercise to help perhaps to help you feel. Okay. So I want you to just do this part of the flamme cue. Uh 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 Ah 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 I think that I think the release I understand is the squeeze that I'm still trying to get my grips up. I think the release I do it. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, just do this. Just do this. Instead of incorporating any part of this trick, just we're, we're going to we're going to end up resting on the surface. But let's see. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's just start at the floor. So we're going to make a throw. And then we're going to bend or turn to the surface for multiple rebounds and let it die there. So you're doing it differently in your right than your left. <laughs> of course I am. Are you surprised? <laughs> let's yes, doing it correctly, or any is doing it correctly. Well, let's just take a look at this for a second, and I'll, so I'll figure out what you're doing. So it's what what is this like? So we're doing ah uh, ah. Uh, I'm just gonna make another throw. Ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. Yeah. So your wrist continues to be bent forward, right? So what are you doing? Let's see. Yeah, see, it doesn't keep going up. It's it's tiny. It's just it's just turning. And and right and then we're going to make a throw here you go let's see 
Ah, I found another interesting thing. Why is it that when you go up, you close your hand? Yeah, we're gonna stay open. Good question, yeah, 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 good question. Yeah. Why are you doing something? Like a tie? Now just make another throw. It you see it's open. Now it's closed. Yeah, yeah you're right. You're right. That's why you felt the squeeze and release. Ah, I know what you mean. Okay, okay, okay. 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 You don't have to come up very much. Not as much as you think. Come on, we want to get to this side of the throw. And, and there doesn't have to be a hump. It's just you're landing flat. And then you're going to go with that. Now there's going to be a little bit of a hump as you go up and you leave your hand alone. Too much of a hump. There you go. Now make a hump. <laughs> OK, good. It's good. It's coming along. So on this. Go ahead and just put it up to 72. I'm not going to dissect it. I just want to see what it, what, what's happening at 72. You're, you're deep in contemplation, which is cool. Thinking about it, you know how I am. I just think about things. That's good. Okay, so 72. And just play the stroke. When you're on your own and you have time to dissect this stuff and work on these exercises, this remedial thing I've just provided, it's no big deal. Your hand will see it'll start to your body will work intuitively after a while. It would feel weird to close your hand on the way out. Okay, so that tempo is not going to be that's that's cool. So the work is it now now really obviously rebound, right? So 40 up to 60 up to 72. And we'll stop there for now. Because this isn't about particularly this stroke. This stroke isn't really, a, this isn't a blazing stroke, but it does provide you insight. And this will translate, this insight that is provided will translate into other strokes. I think I will make a big deal out of this squeeze. In. <laughs> it's okay to make a big deal out of it if you're doing it right. The problem was. Oh. Same mistake is <laughs> squeeze release from the fingers really it wasn't coming it wasn't natural i see yes yeah and so i was foisting what was in my head or what i was saying into the stroke right which that's not what you want okay OK, that's good. So we've got the flamacute happening. Now, I, I want to not forget about reading. I had you in, and it's cool because this particular reading, uh, the three camps, reality, it's roll strokes. So we can, my grandmother always hated the saying, we kill two birds with one stone. But we, so we can accomplish accomplish two things with one task. Okay, so it was Roman numeral six, Mitch Peters, okay, so where are you going to put the metronome? Because I, 100, 100, I, 100 was too fast. Uh, th that doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, 80, 80 is already pretty fast because in reality, 80 is now you're a bit like 160. So we put the metronome. Yeah, it's too fast, probably. Yeah. Okay, so 72, 80. I'm not sure where you worked on it. Go ahead. Where's the metronome? First of all, so that I know, Raph, before you jump in, where do you have the metronome? 72. Go ahead and play it.
So, uh, all right, so we have to play what's written, right? This is, it says, ah, 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 Take it from the second system. Let me hear the starting at the second system. Go ahead and play it. By second system, you mean the second um, um, right? The second line, the second system. It's the system. Metronome was gone. <laughs> last bar, last bar, uh, last bar of the second last system. Take it from there and finish it out. Second bar of the second last system. Okay. No, 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 no. Take it from the second, the last bar of the second last system, so you'll be moving to onto the last line of the piece, which is not what you just played. Ah, okay, last bar. I understood the second bar. Okay, got it. <laughs> okay, so you didn't you didn't work on this enough. All it is. And the sticking's written in for you. Yeah. Right? So it's gonna be ah 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 and here we have our up. The right, the right appoggiatura is the ah, uh. yeah ah, yeah ah, ah ah, ah ah. Make the appoggiatura the up. Uh. Rada, just play rada. No, just go rada. Isn't it? Isn't it this? There it is. Yeah, the, the little double. The appoggiatura is a little up. There you go, better. Okay, so here's what's happening. And by the way, we haven't got to this speed playing roll strokes. Okay, so this is challenging in that, you know, you're up at what? 72, you're at like 144. It's too fast for you. But you got it out, right? And Dick would, Dick would bust you and say, ah, Kevin, you're just muscling everything out. It's okay, it seems like you're playing it, but now, so that we can relax. Remember the what, what stroke was it today? That oh yeah, the flam top thing. Were you really killing yourself there for a minute? <laughs> right? Instead of just 
is not, it's not a big deal. And so when, when we're playing these doubles, we don't want to make a big deal out of it. You're like pumping your arms, and I just want, I just want you to turn your wrist. See? And then see, see the up? Just watch. See, see here's the up. Rapa, rapa. See? Yapa. Last bar. You had a problem going rada. But that's what happens in a double. Maybe it's not quite as open because it's not a repositora. You see? Up, down, see? I'm what? Squeeze and release. Here's a squeeze and release. Check it out. Draft this for a sec. Okay? Squeeze, release. Squeeze, release. Squeeze, oh, left. Squeeze, release. Squeeze, release. Squeeze, release. Squeeze, release. Squeeze, release. Squeeze. 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 Squeeze, release, 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 both hands. See, squeeze, release, squeeze, release, it's happening all the time, right? And so now you'll become aware of it as it happens naturally without you doing anything extraordinary other than, than just letting your body behave the way as Murray Spivak would say, I'm not asking you to do anything that you haven't been doing, that, that your body hasn't been doing since the day you were born. He didn't go as far as to say maybe even before you were born, because our body is working before we come out. <laughs> in probably very in, in, in natural ways, to whatever extent the human being is for is actually uh, developed or whatever level of formation has occurred. But you know, who knows? Buddy Rich was probably playing inside the womb. We don't know. Probably. Right. Okay, so what what I want you to do is uh, I want you to go over this piece again. Can you go ahead and put the metronome down to uh, the metronome down to 65. Go ahead and put yeah, put it at 60. Let's see what it looks like. It's 60. So that'd be 120. I think if you can just turn your wrist without pumping your arms. Just play doubles. Just play just play doubles for me. Okay, and play a seven stroke roll. Count, counting out loud. Doubles and roll strokes. And counting. Are you going to count a seven stroke rap? There's two ways to count a seven stroke roll. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, if it's slow enough. Or there's one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Why don't you just count up to four? Oh, it, no, a roll stroke can start with an accent, but typically we don't start it with an accent. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so you don't know your roll strokes well enough, which is cool, right? It's cool. So we're going to fix that. There you go. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 Five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's to get faster. So how are you going to count that now? One, two, three, four. One, the, the four is the accent. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So when are you, when are, okay, slow the metronome down to, uh, I don't know if that was the tempo, I was just playing with BC. Uh, okay, but you were probably pretty close. Yeah, what I want, I want, what I want you to do is, uh, 
slow the metronome down to say, I don't know, put it down to 40, because we're really, it's twice as fast as this reading, right? Here, here, well, here, let, let's, let's abandon the uh, three counts for a minute. Let's just look at this thing as though we're playing doubles and all strokes, okay? And, and, and then you can bring the knowledge back to reading uh, Mitch Peters' Roman numeral six. Okay, so go, just go ahead and put the metronome on. Stick control is 72 to 80, put the metronome on at 80. Okay. This will help you, perhaps, this will help you feel what I'm, I'm hoping you're about to feel. So we're playing 16th notes if we're playing regular roll strokes, right? So there's not a lot of pressure, is there? There's not a lot of tension in the hand. Now, go ahead and play a seven stroke roll. What I really want you to be careful of, Raph, is I don't want you, Raph, I don't want you coming up and then sh shoving it all with the forearm. I want you to come up and turn your wrist. Turn, turn. As the, It'll have, more of, it'll have more of this feeling, Raph. If Raph, it'll have more of just a go ahead, Give me a big wrist turn. There, it'll have that feeling. A tiny little bend before you do that. Go and give me a little bend and do that. Smaller bend. Come on, no, and then give me a big wrist turn. Little bend and give me the big wrist turn you were just doing. There. Now you're not shoving. There. It feels more like a regular wrist turn. Seven stroke roll. There you go. And, and then after several passes through the seven stroke roll, I'm going to just want you to let the stick die on the surface, similar to what we did with the flamicue, so that you could maybe feel a squeeze and release. I want you to feel that. So after the, the accent, is that it? Play it play four times and then let it die on the surface. Okay, so it's going to be like, it's going to be, how are we going to do this? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Ah, okay. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. I hold you like one, two, three, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Uh, yeah, just the hand that makes the accent is going to play multiple rebounds that die on the surface. Uh, come on, so it's, an, it's what we did before. It's an accent to a release, right? It's an accent to a release. But you don't play an extra double. It's at, right after the accent, and then you're going to release. Oh, okay. Or, okay. Then, it's it's the surface, okay? Yeah, and, and once you make the last accent, one, let's say the last, this is the last one. One, two, three, four, and you can just take your time and let it die on the surface. Okay. Yeah. Um, and let it die. Yeah, just play one iteration. Play an accent, and then the hand that plays the accent is going to die. See, you, you should be more open there than you are here. Okay? But you don't have to do a big thing. I just want you to be aware of the fact that there is a difference. See, there's actually there's actually a squeeze and release. 
One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Here's an eleven. So if you go to the double, release, release, squeeze, release, release. Release, release, release. Squeeze, release. You see, see there's a difference? See, see it's on more open? See, now, now the, the butt end has come to the palm. So I've gone like this, and watch what happens. Watch the butt end. See, it come away from the palm. See it moving, see, see it's away from the palm. Okay, isn't it? Okay. Right? To whatever extent, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit away from, from the palm. Okay. Oh. Squeeze, release. Squeeze. You can see it, can't you? See, see how my wrist bends forward? Watch. Here's the other thing you can notice. See? My wrist is in this position as I squeeze. Check it out. Let's check it out. You can fiddle around on your own, kind of play with this. But just watch. Now, see, I'll talk to you about the, the butt end and the palm. Right now, I want you to look at the the the, the positioning, the posture. See, I'm more more bent forward here. Aren't I? Mm -hmm. So watch. Forward, back. Forward, back. Okay. Forward, forward, back. Forward, back. So there's a, a different. There's a change in the uh, position of. The hand relative to the forearm. Okay. When I squeeze, I'm in this position. Right? When I go to play rebounds, I'm bent a little more forward. I have to release. So it's it is reflected in the positioning of the wrist. The wrist and the hand relative to the forearm. So it's coming along. So just be aware of that. Don't go trying to feel something by right by exaggerating emotion and that, that's part of the beauty of this uh, of this technique is that it is so naturally inherent with regards to how the the body works on this planet there you go that was good okay see a little more bent forward Okay. And you didn't go closing your hand to go up because I thought the up was relaxing. Why would you close your hand when we're trying to relax? Now, Murray would say, you're loose and then you're tight. That's the other mistake. That's like squeeze and release because now you're loose and now you're tight. Uh uh. The looseness is from the wrist. And the tightness is that tight? Maybe it's more closed and more open. Do the words tight and loose properly reflect what's happening? Maybe, maybe not. So you have to be careful with the words you use, okay? Because they will affect how you think and ultimately affect what you're feeling. It, you, don't, you don't want to unduly influence what's going on here with clever stuff and a bunch of words that you're really not feeling, okay? So just, just pay attention to what's really happening. Oh man, turning this off. <laughs>